get started here. Okay. All right, well, welcome everyone. This uh, training call today is all about inventory. It's that thing that we do once a year to just account for the asset, um, the investments usually right behind us. I see many of you sitting in your store inventory. So it's to count for what we have as an asset at our locations. And it, it is a very clarifying process for just how we are stewarding the resources that we've invested in. I will say on behalf of everyone, something we already know, we have a lot more than we've ever had. So the counting, um, might feel like it's overwhelming because there might be twice as much as we normally have. Um, but I am encouraged that the process itself is going to feel A, familiar to many of you. Some parts of the process will seem very much the same. Um, and the processes that are different are going to be pretty straightforward and easy. So I'm encouraged that overall, Although this will take about a day or two for many of you, uh, it goes pretty quickly. And uh, we have a couple of people here on the call that can testify to that. They've already done it and completed that. Um, a couple of just details, and then I'm going to pass this on to Beth uh, for her to walk us through some of the specific details. But just a couple things to remind you of. Um, the first thing is you want to print out the process. Um, hopefully you've done that and you can take notes on that for the call today. But if you don't, it is in Dropbox under point of sale manual. And then it is section five or V uh, for inventory. And it will have screenshots and it'll walk you through the process. The second resource that we have will be this phone call, which I will read. It, it's set to record here and I will save it on probably on our retail website just to protect our uh, space on Dropbox. So uh, it'll be saved for you there. And then the last thing is we've been going back and forth to make reservations this year. And part of that is that we want to space this out so that we're not pushing them all to the last day. And then those, myself and Beth, mostly work Beth does on the back end is not compressed into a 24 hour period. Thank you for your feedback. That reservation list is in Dropbox. It's uh, just inventory reservations. Uh, if you have any changes to that list, just shoot me an email and we'll try and find another date to make it work. I know some of you are still trying to manage groups that were on the calendar and now that they're not. And so you have some flexibility and your dates are changing. Uh, just know it, it's flexible, but just reach out to me so we can find a good time to do that. And then finally, there's a couple of dates to put in front of you. Inventory every year is due at the last day of the month uh, to bookkeepers by October 1st. And the process on the accounting side has remained unchanged. So first close is October 5th and second close is October 8th. Those dates are on our retail landing page or our retail website landing page if you forget them. But you know the process back and forth between finding some discrepancies and doing some research. Those are some other dates that even though you have completed your count and submitted the documentation to your bookkeeper, there is a little bit of back and forth that takes place the first week of October. All right, with that in mind, um, I am gonna share my screen and hopefully this time it works. So give me a second here. All right, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen and it says inventory. Oh, fantastic, okay. This is saved in Dropbox as well uh, under that uh, PowerPoint section on training. There, this is just designed to illustrate an overview of the processes involved. Now, I will acknowledge that if I put every single error, uh, arrow on this uh, workflow chart of some of the back and forth, it would look unreadable. But just in a general sense, this is the process that we'll be walking through. The first part starts with you. Um, as we talked about this on our last call, you're the project manager of this project. So you oversee it and you're organizing the overflow and the, uh, 
process and getting the right people to help you. But the column on the left in turquoise just walks you through some of the preparations like organizing your space, getting folks to join you as counters, you're gonna do some of the work in the back office or in the dashboard where you wanna receive all your purchase orders. You wanna make sure your inventory uh, has been, um, I'm sorry, your, I'm so sorry. Let me admit a couple more people, just a second. Oh, there we go. I think we've got everyone in, the meeting. Uh, but you want to receive all your purchase orders. Then you want to make sure your invoices are all paid. And then this part, this next step we'll, we'll walk through in more detail, but you're going to run a projected profit. And then you're going to receive uh, the count sheets from Beth. Now, these count sheets, there's going to be quite a few of them. Um, I believe at Washington Family Ranch, when they went to print, they had 500 pages. So two things, you wanna make sure you print this not on your little desk jet printer that's just going line by line. You wanna take it to the office, uh, to the best printer you have access to. You wanna make sure you have lots of paper and possibly some ink um, cartridges, but it will not be this long in the future. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we're gonna reduce that but you are gonna to wanna to print those count sheets. We're gonna have some of the process coming back and forth. Uh, you'll notice that the SNP uh, or the visual report is gonna be saved in the W drive. And that's just a place we're sharing back and forth with, with, with bookkeepers on um, our process. So that's the overall process gonna happen during those counting days. The next step we want another department head to be involved. This is most likely gonna be an admin manager. It's been that way in the past. And they're gonna take your count sheets and enter in to square those updated quantities. So if your admin manager for some reason is not available, it can be a food service manager, your guest services manager, um, but just another person um, that's a department head. And this doesn't take a lot of time. So uh, 30 minutes to an hour depends on how fast they can enter things in. Uh, but that will be discussed in more detail. Then if you'll notice that, that uh, the uploads come back to Beth, uh, that orange, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Then your bookkeeper is going to do some entries in Lawson, and then you notice in those middle columns some back and forth between investigating discrepancies. This is also going to be a process that you're going to be able to reduce items dramatically, which Beth will talk to you about. So your database is going to shrink. It's going to be like cleaning house in some ways. Um, and then you're going to finally snip that uh, visual back into the W drive. I won't go over the things that Beth or myself will be doing in this process, but just so you know, there's a little bit of back and forth uh, to manage the back end. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that we're all back and I'm gonna pass it to Beth. So again, this is designed to be an overview of the process, just to give you a, a high level view about 30,000 feet. And now we're gonna get into some of the real <laughs> specifics. Uh, Beth, how how are you? Is it is it letting you share your screen? Yes, it'll uh, it'll let me share my screen, uh, and Perfect. we'll get there here in a minute. Awesome! All right, we'll take it from here. I have a little slithering boy going by me, so he's not in the picture here. <laughs> Sorry for the giggles there. Uh, so, um. A little bit more about what Kathleen was talking about. Really, the beginning of inventory is what you guys are doing before you begin counting, and that's the preparation. And um, you know, we have a lot of tips and tricks for that. Um, and the reality is, is you learn uh, what works for you, and take notes and to remember it for the next year. Um, but there are some things you want to do ahead of time before you start counting and Kathleen has emailed uh, some of those Monday updates, but um, just as a reminder, um, she mentioned gather supplies, especially paper and uh, ink this year um, and clipboards for people to use to, for their accounting sheets. 
Um, you want to create a counting system. We have, you know, everyone has their own little ways of doing it, but some of the things that people have uh, said as best practices before is like, hey, when I'm done counting, I turn in the item upside down. That way we know that it's been counted. Or some people put a certain color sticky note on the items once they've been colored, like hot pink sticky notes means this pile has been counted or they'll flip the shirt around um, if that's been done. Um, or Tammy even used tape. They use masking tape to tape off the sections that had been counted just so that's a visual that when you, you can look around the store and say, okay, I can see what's been counted. And then if there's something that's not taped off or doesn't have a sticky note or whatever the case is, then it's a, a quick visual for you to go, okay, let's go look at this and find it and make sure it gets counted. Um, and as you do this year to year, you start getting um, more ways to do it. So if you're looking for more ideas, there are some veterans here that can definitely give you some good ideas and feedback on that. Um, another big part is organization. Um, organize your back room, organize your, your store, having everything all in like um, uh, sections. So like if all your stickers in one location, all your uh, you know books are all together. Um, Tammy did hers all by vendor. Um, I did mine all by category. You know, you kind of get your own little section. Some people just go from left to right in the store, just go around in the store, it is what it is. Um, so you just wanna make sure that all of your items from your displays, whether that's just in the store, maybe in the snack bar you have a display, somewhere else in the camp location you have a display, you wanna make sure all those items are stripped and brought back to the store to be counted. Um, and then all of the uh, administrative stuff, your purchase orders, transfers, consignment items, invoices, need to make sure all of those things are complete and um, updated. Um, even a little, uh, I feel like October 2nd, we'll get emails from vendors saying, hey, I have invoices from these camps that aren't paid. And it's like, oh, darn it. Now that's going on next fiscal years. Uh, Per, or payment. So um, you can be proactive in that and just contacting your main vendors and just say, hey, I just want to double check. I'm all clear. <laughs> like, do I have any outstanding payments? Um, some of them are really good, but some of them are late. So it's just a, a proactive thing you can do. Um, and then ultimately, anything that is on camp that is for retail needs to be checked in, counted, um, paid for everything for inventory. So if it comes on the 28th, it still needs to be added into inventory and needs to be paid and accounted for for this fiscal year. So just because the box isn't open doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be counted. Um, I'm going to jump in real quick and just pause and see now that we've talked about preparations up to this point. Any questions from you all on the prep that Beth has been talking about? Everyone good with gathering clipboards and and teams of people. I would hope that there's a lot of willing support from other teams because I would imagine you've been helping other teams. Uh, Abigail, I'm thinking about you helping in landscape. I'm sure they'd love to come in and help you in retail. So uh, don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> oh yeah, my re my uh, landscaping people have actually abandoned me. Oh, okay. but it's okay. I'm not holding it against them. <laughs> good, good, good. All right, no questions about preparation. And then before we jump back in, does anyone have a trick that they've used in counting that Beth did not mention that has worked for you really well? She mentioned using tape and sticky notes and flipping things over. Have any of you found anything that works really well that hasn't been mentioned? I use Ziploc baggies. So, like when I'm counting things, I'll like count all the guitar picks, put them in a Ziploc, put a sticky note in the Ziploc with the count on it and then put it back where it goes on the table. Um, that's just a way also to keep things organized mm -hmm. while you're doing it. Good. I, I have a preparation question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Um, is there, maybe this is for Beth or for uh, Tammy or Karen or someone who's done it, but when the sheets are printed out, um, like in the past, I would give 
one person all the gift sheets and then another person all the convenience sheets is there a way that it's that we know that it's organized so that we can make a determination about whether we want to put like items together or vendors together yep yep we uh will go i'll sh give you a visual of that what the worksheet's going to look like but it is sorted specifically by your camp your category and SKU. so it'll go by books and then all the books will be in order and clothing all the small medium large extra large double xls will all be right next to each other in order um yeah great so Thank by you. doing it by category you'll be able to do that easily Okay, great. Beth, keep going. All right. So can you guys see my screen should be square? Okay. So um, one of the things I just suggest you doing at the beginning, just to see your beginning and ending inventory here. Um, so first you just want to run a projected profit report. So I'm just going to show you. Um, it's now under reports um, and inventory reports, projected profit. <clears throat> And on this, um, we learned that uh, you have to do the day before. So like if you're counting on the 22nd, your inventory value will be what it was on the 21st. Um, so today's the 16th. So it's showing me what my inventory value was on the 15th. And you can select your location. We'll do Carolina Point. And then we want to make sure we take off most people don't have any cost or any information in the snack bar or crafts, but just in case, we're going to take those off. Um, unselect them. Come on. So now we see that Carolina Point's current value is 131000 And so she's just going to take a snip of this. And if you don't have snip for the new people, get snip. Uh, and you're just going to snip it and save it um and save that to your uh what did we say just doesn't matter really where you save it just save that oh we did say save it into the w drive with your fiscal year and date um and that'll at least just give you like where your your starting point okay before you do inventory so that's really your your last preparation thing to do and then next um i'm going to send you a I'm going to stop share here and give you a different share. I'm going to send you a worksheet and this, or spreadsheet, excuse me. Um, and it will look like this. Can you see an Excel spreadsheet? Great. Um, so this is a sample of one that I did for wilderness and it'll come looking just like this. Um, unfortunately in Square, our, um, I can't run an inventory only for your camp. So I have to sort it. Um, and as I mentioned, we're sorting it by camp, category, and SKU. And this is the biggest thing. If you don't take anything else away from this week <laughs> or this call uh, for inventory, please do not resort. Do not resort. Do not resort this. It is what it is um, for accounting. And that enables us to, um, I'm going to I'm going to export this out of our database, send it to you. You're going to put in your new numbers. I'm going to copy these yellow highlighted cells and put them back into a new um, import back into Square. And um, if you resort something different, it messes up the lines. So I can't just do copy paste. I'm going to have to do individual line by line by line by line. Um, and currently it takes the, for our sample, uh, not our sample, but our beta testers took about an hour and a half per camp to re-import their inventory. Um, and they just had a couple additions. So the two things that I want to say is do not resort and do not add items, um, to the database. Don't add new items. Um, any new items will be added here on this. Um, on the spreadsheet, we'll have a second tab and it's called new items. And this is where you'll add any items that um, aren't currently under your location. So do not sort. <laughs> um, and the other thing too, I would say is do not go into square and adjust a line item. So like if you see that 
hey, Malibu sunglasses really aren't clothing accessories. They're supposed to be some other category. Please do not go into square and adjust it because that also will adjust your lines um, when I export and import back in. Um, so once you get this spreadsheet, you're only working on this spreadsheet. All right, so I'm sending you this spreadsheet. Sorry. I was going to add, as you get the spreadsheet, think of it as being frozen, that you're taking a snapshot, just like you would a photograph of what's in the database, and you want to freeze that and then focus on the counts. Some of the additions and the corrections, they can happen after, and that's what that additional spreadsheet that Beth showed you, but think of this as a snapshot or a photo that you want to keep static until the next step. So just super important. To, worth re-emphasizing. Great point. Um, so you're going to get this spreadsheet in an email. You're going to want to save this to your desktop, um, you know, as inventory count 2020. And then I have gone through, when I sort it for your camp, I add in all these lines and um, like here, I'll do a little print preview here. Um, and as you go your print preview, you can, um, Sorry, your picture's in my way. Okay, so on the print preview, you can see that I have a signature and a, a page number, and it has your camp name here at the top of every page. Um, so that should help you keep it in order. Um, but this was wildernesses, and as you go down, you're just, you only want to print, make sure you get this, you only want to print the pages that have your Y and all these little bars. So like here, I go down, oh, sorry. I went too far and so now I'm in ends, which they don't have. So I know that she actually had 35 pages here. So she only wants to print page one through 35. And you can do that here, pages one to 35. Otherwise, you're gonna be printing 18,288 pages and nobody wants to do that. Your office will be mad that <laughs> you're using all the paper. You won't even have that much paper. Um, so only print your boxed uh, inventory. Yes. Can I ask a quick question, Beth? Yes. Um, the price that's listed on the, in that fifth column, um, is that going to be the price at our location? Like if that's different, if there's a price override, is that going to show the price at our location? Um, that's a, uh, actually, it does no. not. It won't, no, that's just the main price. There's, there are some other columns. Um, I don't have them on this page. Uh, if we went over to the right, it has price for wilderness. Like if I was doing wilderness, it would say price for wilderness. So this is the default price. But if you have a different price, that's in a different column on down the line. If you wanted to expand and see um, those columns, you could see that. And I guess along with that question too, is it okay if we were to like, like when we print it, it's not going to mess it up if we hide certain columns from the print, right? Yes. It, this is formatted for all the information you need for um, doing this. Because if you hide, these are, these are the columns that you'll need for counting. It is already form, like it's all set up okay. to be able to print all the columns that you'll need. Um, because as we get down here with clothing, it's going to give you the size, color, all that stuff. So there's no hiding any more columns other than what is on there. Does that make sense? <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right, so you should be able to see, tell me what you see right now. You see the spreadsheet. You do see the spreadsheet. Okay. All right. So um, let me get back to where I was here. Um, like I said, I have the, the counters. You'll print these sheets. These were one through 35. You'll hand them out however you hand them out. Um, and there's a space for whoever counted can sign it. So that way when they hand it to you, you can review it. And then if you have any questions like, hey, let's go recount this one, 
you know, only had 65 and it's supposed to have 250. Let me go find the person that counted this and go, let's, let's go see what she counted. Maybe she counted the wrong sticker or whatever. Um, so you'll know who did what. Um, and then um, you'll turn those sheets into the bookkeeper. And the, this new quantity is the last column on every page when it's printed. So that's where they're just entering in these new um, prices. This other highlighted yellow column is the one, this means that um, your, this item has been assigned to your location. So what we learned was that, um, you know how we learned that when we do variations, it's new for you and only you. And at the beginning, it was going to everybody. So like blankets, everybody had every single blanket we ever carried across all camps and not just your location. So if you come across an item that has zero, like when Wilderness did this, she's like, I don't have craft packs. So she changed that to an N. And that when I import it back in, it cleaned up her database to only be the items that she actually carried in her store. Um, with Wilderness, we reduced her inventory by two thirds by just doing the ends. And then with Washington Family Ranch, we um, reduced it by half. So this is something that Tammy said, you know, it took, a, took her time, probably the most time was to go through all the items. And if there's an item that, you know, that she may have zero counts on, it's not something that she has. And so she was able to go in and change the yes to a no. And now when I import it and she goes back to look at her database, all of those items are no longer attached to her location. So that's a big bonus of doing inventory really every year we'll be able to um, clean that up. Beth? Yes. Um, I was just going through my inventory to take a look at some stuff and I noticed I found out that where I have a zero that I don't plan to have it anymore if I just go in and change that zero so that my it doesn't show the castaway has it they would just make the dash instead of the zero would that make that difference for that? Um, well, today's the 16th, so we don't want you making any more changes um, in Square itself. So any changes that you make um, need to be on this sheet itself. And when you change it to an N, it will totally take it out of Castaway's um, okay. database completely. So you won't see that at all when you, you know, filter to your location. Okay. It will still be in Square. It okay. just won't have Castaway tied to it any longer. Absolutely. Good question. Thanks for the clarity. That's an okay. important one. Um, let me pause and have Beth, let's have you stop sharing so that we see the whole screen. There's been a lot shared so far that's been really important. So I'd like everyone to go to the chat feature and put in the most important thing that you've heard so far. Um, and I hope that we can just pause and, and review a, just a little bit. I have a question. Go for it. Um, so I just want to make sure I understood it correctly. The inputter is all they're looking at is that new quantity column on that big spreadsheet and that stack of paper they're getting. They're yes. just looking at that bar column. Yes. Great. I had highlighted that column on the spreadsheet. So it was just all yellow so that when it imported or just the person inputting those numbers knew that that's just the column they're supposed to be looking at and then went from there. And then it's also when you're comparing numbers, sometimes it pops out a little bit easier. Thanks. I have a quick question, Beth. Um, you said to not make any changes in Square at all after today. Does that include store openings? Um, in sales because that changes the quantities? Yeah, good, great question. It's not sales, it's just we're not asking, we're asking you not to add new items because um, that changes the lines in our spreadsheets. Um, what I, it, sales will not be affected at all. Um, I export it, send it to you, and then this is why I'm copying and pasting because then I grab a new uh, export sheet. <laughs> Uh, whatever's current that evening that I'm working at while no one is open and it has the most updated sales, then I um, copy and paste the new numbers from your import sheet. 
Gotcha. So a follow-up, really weird specific example. Um, we have a mice problem at Saranac really badly right now. And oh. on multiple occasions, I've walked into the store and they've eaten chapstick. Um, and so if I damage out a chapstick, does that affect anything with inventory during this time in Square? Nope, it's just adding new, new items, which adds a new line uh, to the inventory. Great. Yeah. Great question. I remember those mice, Allie. Um, think of it in terms of the structure of our database needs to remain stable, but sales and the quantities are going to ebb and flow. But we want to be able to export, import back in, and the only thing that we're going to adjust is that one column related to quantity, but everything else has to, the rows have to match up. So, all right, well, I'm going to look at the chat feature. Just, just a couple re things to restate is don't resort, don't resort, don't resort. Uh, don't print N items. Uh, don't add any new items at this point, uh, at, in, really through the end of this month. Um, different ways to mark items is done. That, that can be a great thing to even share with one another. If you haven't done inventory before, I'd encourage you to touch base with your resource coach and learn from them as far as what were their tricks and tips. Um, I remember one uh, tip a number of years ago uh, was feed your counters. It makes for happy counters, but don't feed them greasy, salty Cheetos that then they touch your inventory. So that's a little pro tip um, from damaging out inventory through our counters, not, not eating clean food. So anything else that uh, you want to ask before we dive into some next steps? Can I ask a question that I think has been answered, but I'm still slightly unclear. The sign-up sheets that we're supposed to be getting for our specific time slot, um, I emailed you guys, but is there a specific sheet I'm missing? And where is that? Not a specific sheet, but you can go to Dropbox. It's not hidden in a specific folder and it said inventory reservation and it has the dates that have been set aside for you. We tried to space them out. Um, and Danny, uh, you know, I know you're helping out a couple other locations. We tried to also space it with other locations. So if you have a change to what's listed on that sheet, just shoot me an email. And we, we did get those dates by the, uh, um, sorry, we had sent out a, Google Doc that you had filled in mm -hmm. what dates you were wanting to count. So that's where we got the dates really from. Yeah, and then, I'm a little great. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm going to run over that. We've had some staff that are taking some PTO those dates. So I will be counting $150,000 worth of inventory with three people. So yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> So we're hoping to get more, but um, that's where we're at. So I may go over. Yeah. Um, and then the other question is once, and I think that this is coming next, potentially, I'll make sure. Once we put all that data into a spreadsheet, that one, we email it to you or to the bookkeeper? To me. And well, yeah, we, we're, we're heading that way. Great. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Don't send it to your bookkeeper. They don't care about all that. I just, one more quick question. Oh, sorry, go the ahead. The Eastern Division has one bookkeeper right now who's also at Lost Canyon. So I just want to, is that going to be any headache for like the East Coast camp hitting stuff? Okay, great. All right, Ellis Ann, go for it. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understood about the N and Y items. While we're counting, if we come across an item that is in there as a why, we can change it to no. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about next. It's really okay. after you guys have counted everything, your bookkeepers entered in all your numbers, then you're going to go through that sheet and say which ones need to be yes, no, and you can adjust that. Any other questions before we go forward? I don't have a question and I don't know if other people do kind of that 
you know, search find when you're trying to find an item on a page or just weird names come up. You know what it is, but it's just labeled differently. Um, it took me talking to my admin to figure this out. But if Beth were to pull back up the spreadsheet. Yeah, I'm trying to find your picture. I have it saved here to show. Uh, show the pictures. Here we go. All right, can you see the picture? So it's just that second tab over on the bottom there, then that gives you where you can control find, type in the name and then scroll and see what page you're looking for if you need to reference back to anything. Cause I was trying to organize it and it never lined up right until my admin goes, click on this. Oh, okay. And that, that became helpful with, um, to if there are items that um, people don't know what it is, like, hey, I don't know what this is, you can, and you know, you can search for it and say, oh, it's on this page. They can go count it here. Um, or Tammy had a bin of items they didn't know what they were um, or items that were counted, but uh, what did you have? They were counted, but didn't know we were missing labels. Um, Tammy had some great ideas and I put that in um, Dropbox in the inventory file as well for you to see just some ideas and pictures that from Tammy's experience this time. All right. Okay. Then I'm going to keep going. So um, you have just finished counting all of your items. The bookkeep, you've handed them off to the bookkeeper. The bookkeeper has entered all the new quantities in that far right column. Admin and manager, admin manager or yeah, sorry, admin manager, whoever it's supposed to be another um, another department head. Another department head, yes. Yeah, just actually it should not be your bookkeeper. And and that has been a, a little bit of a you know, in RMS last time around, it was a bookkeeper. And so this time the checks and balances is they want it to not be the bookkeeper. So the bookkeeper is not in Square, but the admin manager or someone else can be, so. Um, all right, and then you're gonna wanna save that um, and you can call it new quantity for your camp name. And then you're gonna email that to me um, I'm sorry, not yet. You're just going to save it, new quantity, camp name. And then you as a retail manager are going to go in and look at that yes, no column and change anything that was um, not in your inventory, change to a no. And those are the two columns that I'll be importing back in to Square. Um, so once you're done with that, you're going to um, save it. And then actually one more thing, <laughs> sorry. I'm going to share my screen one more time. Um, so you've done both these two columns, the yes and no's and the quantities. And then if you have items that um, were not listed for your location on that spreadsheet, you're going to want to add it to the new items. Um, please, please, please do not go into Square and just say, oh, I'm just going to assign it because it may be in Square. It just may not be assigned to your location, but please don't go into Square and assign it to your location. Please add it here um, and then I will, uh, that's part of the import that I'll do for you uh, when you send it back to me. And then, so new items are done, your counts are done, your yes, no's are done then you're gonna save that and send it back uh, to me and I'll import that all into Square. And then you'll get an email back from me saying your, your inventory is updated, your new items have been added. You can now start on 7K, which is um, go back and do another re profit report and see what your new inventory value is. And that value is uh, something you're going to save into the W drive again and let your bookkeeper know that that um, value is saved there in the W drive that they can pull up and do their thing, which they're going to be creating a discrepancy report to show us like, you know, this is what Lawson had, this is what Square has, this is where how much you're off. And then the investigation begins. <laughs> um, so and on this little, um, inventory sheet that Kathleen sent out, we put some 
helpful questions to ask. If you're, if Lawson shows that you have less inventory than your item value does in Square, then these are the questions you need to ask and these are the things you can look for. And if Lawson shows more, then these are the questions you need to ask and, and investigate. And then you may have some, hey, we didn't have some sales that didn't get recorded uh, this year. And so they'll go back and fix those. And then some may be that you have some, uh, hey, I had a box of inventory that I didn't have, you know, counted or something. And so you're gonna change that. So once all your changes have been made, you're gonna wanna do another inventory value uh, report and send that to your bookkeeper uh, before second close and they'll um, do another discrepancy <laughs> report and kind of show you what your final uh, numbers are. And then you are done. And I would say to take notes of anything that you want to help remember, because we do this once a year, even though you may have done it 10 years now that I feel like every year there's something like, how did I do that last year? Or what did what worked or what didn't work? It's a great time to just jot some notes down. Um, if you use the Krog, you can throw it in there and um, someplace that you would be able to see it next year to remind yourself of things that went well or didn't go well. That's it. Okay, great. Thanks, Beth, for walking through that. Um, if you'll end the sharing, then we can go back to the full screen. And we're going to go back to that chat box again. And in this next section, type in in the chat bar something that is a takeaway for you, something that you wrote down, underlined, put a star next to um, as you listen to that next section. And we'll just read it. I have one question, actually two questions. Okay. Um, in regards to putting on the new number, what if the number is exact same as what is on the sheet? Should we just check it off or should we put the new number, the same number on there twice? Put the same number in that column because it's now your, your admin who's looking at this sheet, it's not you. So your admin needs to know this is the number to write in. So there should be a number for every column every or column. every, okay. and every the row. The question is the stuff that's at the e-store now, that is still in our inventory. Great question. So what do we do? Do we just add that in? Some, some of the stuff has been sold. So some of the stuff is, I, I mean, it, to me, they still have all of it. I don't know what all they've sold, so. Okay, yeah. well, I, I can answer some parts of that. In Dropbox, under social media, there are two reports. One is June sales and one is July sales. I hope to have August sales in there. In fact, maybe I put it in there, I don't remember, but the August should be any day now. The other document that you're gonna find in that social media folder is the inventory counts for your location um, that you can put in there. So you can make that adjustment. So you can account for what is not physically with you. Okay, so the ones that they have not sold is the amount there, so I would just add that into my inventory. Uh, actually, um, you, so what was paid? Nothing has been paid for, correct? No. Correct. Well, okay. I did, I did just receive a credit in my concur, but I have not received any documentation what it is. I asked John for it. He asked Sheriff for it, but I have not received anything. So I don't know. All I know is the amount and I assume it's from the e-store. It's mm. just a credit just said on the concur. It shouldn't be a credit from the e-store. Um, because the sales will come through on your detail trial balance because those will go that just came in a lump sum and the bookkeepers now have sent those out for June and July. So you should see that on detail trial balance, not as a credit. So that should be something else. So sorry, so let me confirm here for Janet. Um, okay. So you they clean fund has not paid anybody for their inventory correct they have they will pay june they pay june and july and they will by year end pay for august okay and so they need then what inventory so you're saying for take your total inventory that you sent to john minus june july and august sales and that's um, what you need to add to your items let me confirm that but i believe that second spreadsheet is the inventory currently currently that John did yeah. for them okay so let me follow up on that I okay. have to refresh. I just want to know which way it goes whether it's yes positive or negative sure 
Let me take that as a follow-up, Janet. Great question. That was a great question because we do need to account for those in your inventory because you'll count them. The numbers will look different, yes. <laughs> uh, but you do need to account for what has not been sold. Okay, great. All right. Uh, great question. Looking over at the chat, some of the things, the takeaways is uh, Tammy's uh, search feature. That was a great find. Um, count sheets go to Beth. Um, Send it to uh, let the admin manager, not your bookkeeper, do the entering the counts. And then here, I'm not sure on this one. Oh, here it is. Pam answered, uh, Jane, I don't know if you can see that the credit's probably from that mint wristband from Halo that we had sent back that was printed incorrectly. So there were a few colors that you may have sent back. All right, as far as the counting and who can do the counting, um, let me just kind of clarify that. The, the, the physical counting needs to be done by other people. And the great thing is, is anyone on your staff is qualified to do the counting. But I would recommend that as you get the sheets back from folks, again, see yourself as the project manager, you're overseeing the whole process, that you're even looking at the count sheets every time they come back to you, and you're kind of giving a first round look of, that number doesn't look right. That discrepancy is pretty significant. I wonder if that box that I kept down in this other place got included. So be sure you're looking at those count sheets as they're flowing in. That's kind of your first round to give some detective work. And if you see big variations, you should be asking yourself right then why that might be. Okay. Other questions? So just pop yourself off mute. I'll close out chat here. I don't know if this is a question to ask here or just, but do, does anyone else have products that they never received? Like I have a few clean fun things that I still haven't received and sent several emails about them. Do y'all get like tracking numbers at all for any of those things? Um, or am I the only one? <laughs> Items that they said has been shipped, but you never received them? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, they were on invoices like back, you know, when all the invoices came out, but. They I should never. be able to give you tracking information on that. Okay. I've sent a few emails, but I haven't had any response yet um, and that happened to me a lot too this year with clean fun um and i sent a bunch of emails and eventually i just copied kathleen on an email and john was like we're sending them or here's your credit so okay yeah well, i've had trouble getting emails to back and i finally just called sherry yesterday and she called me right back so you might just make a phone call okay I would recommend Sherry is one of the most efficient on the ball people. And if you haven't talked with her on the phone, this is a great opportunity to do so. Sherry is the get it done person on that team. So I would encourage you to give her a call. Cool. Thanks. Um, Beth, you mentioned that if there's discrepancies that we're going to go back and fix, if we have to recount, where are we entering those recounted numbers? Um, you would do that manually. Um, so you would go to the items, just like we did at the very beginning when we were doing uh, stock received, you would choose yep. inventory recount instead. It would be inventory recount would be the um, selection. Yes. And then we just run a projected profit report after those updates. Yes. Yeah. Great. That's awesome. Thank you. All right, well, I'm, uh, Tammy and Karen, both you have both uh, completed inventory. So can you give us a one, two uh, minute testimonial that you survived, got the Girl Scout patched, it's official, you, you made it through. Karen, can, can you start and tell us just a little bit about your process? Uh, uh, so obviously Wilderness's store is a lot smaller than most people's so i just tried to organize it really well and had all of my items out and together because in addition i was also boxing it all up for the winter so that kind of 
was killing two birds with one stone and getting things organized to how I wanted to box them up as well. Um, but yeah, I think the whole process went really smooth. The spreadsheet was easy to understand. And like Beth mentioned, two thirds of my items were no's. And so I was able to get rid of a lot of that, which is gonna really help and clean it up. So I'm excited for it to um, look a lot different when we get back in there and to be more clean and easy to understand. Thanks, Karen. Tammy, you had two stores. Tell us a little bit about it. We organize them both the same way as much as we can. So um, a lot, like Karen said, it went smooth. It's just have some time and patience as we go through this new process. And the steps that Beth has sent out are great to just have on hand and kind of keep ticking down. Okay, this is my next step. This is my next step and not overthink it. It's just inventory, we're counting, we know what we're doing. It's just a new system is all. So um, yeah, it went pretty smooth because you're doing the same thing that you've done in the past. Tammy, how many days and hours and what was your inventory level so folks can kind of have a comparable gauge? I had at Canyon $120,000 and I probably had I mean, some of my people ebbed and flowed a little bit on what who was helping, but at least a good seven to eight people. It took a day and a half to count that. Um, our pages printed out at 255. Creekside was sitting at 110,000. We had five people over there and it took a day and a half as well. A smaller location just can't put as many people. And they printed out at 280 some pages. Okay. Don't you know why lot, you you had a lot uh, reduced after that. Yeah, so I for sure. I mean, if you've got at least six bodies and you're over a hundred thousand, plan on at least a day and a half. And again, that's all in how you organize your store too. So if they're having to move between multiple locations to find things, or just your back room to your front room type of stuff, know that that's going to add some time. Thank you for that. All right, well, we're gonna wrap up here. Um, two things, um, look at the screen in front of you. There are a lot of us and so um, please reach out if you have questions. Karen and Tammy, Beth and myself, uh, two of them have actually walked through the process and so feel free to give them a call. They, they're done with inventory. So don't make those steps without confidence and don't uh, forget that you have a lot of people that you can check in with. Um, and then finally, um, myself and Beth, we're going to stay on after the call. If you just have some questions, if you just feel like, could you say that again? We just want to be here uh, for a couple of minutes after the call to um, have a smaller group conversation. But unless there's anything else, last call on questions. All righty. Well, that's a wrap for our training call on inventory. Those of you that are participating in Shop Our Shelves know that this is a time to take um, and we'll close those out on Friday. So um, more later. Take care, everybody.